ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश वेलकम टू साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम सीरीज वेल लकीली एनफ आई कुड रीड सर्टन स्ट्रेंज इंसिडेंट्स दट हैपन्ड इन द चाइल्डहुड ऑफ भगवान श्री सत साई बाबा That book was written by Prashant Prabhakar Palekar from Mumbai, and this was published by Sri Satsai Books and Publication Trust, Mumbai. This I am bringing to your notice only to establish the authenticity and the credibility of the incidents that I am going to share with you. the first time i have come to know know that then i thought that i should be sharing with our friends with our friends also well it happened when swami was quite young and he used to go with his devotees to the banks of chitravati river in the evenings thus chitravati has a very important place in the life of bhagwan shri sat sai baba once some of the devotees expressed their desire to know swami's satya swarupa satya swarupa meaning true nature do what is asked him all of a sudden when swami was there the group of devotees sitting there on the banks of the chitravati river well when they asked it was almost uh, sunset time and while walking with the devotees swami suddenly disappeared everybody started searching for him but to no avail suddenly they heard a clapping sound from a distance from a hill top in in when everyone looked in the direction they saw swami standing on top of the hill he asked everyone from there do you want to see the sun yes you in all of them said Yes Swami we want to see sun everybody replied in unison how will the sun reappear after sunset impossible but lo and behold they could see the surya narayana our sun rising behind sri satya narayana our beloved bhagwan its brilliance was so intense they all started sweating profusely due to the heat they shouted swami it's too hot in an instant the heat started reducing then swami asked do you want to see the moon and the full moon started rising behind him as the pleasant moonlight started to spread everywhere the devotees feeling the cold started shivering some of them shouted swami it is too cold and the cold slowly subsided then swami announced in his authoritative tone i will show you the third eye now the third eye you know lord shiva has third eye i will show you now watch carefully said bhagwan even as everyone was wondering how the third eye will be swami could not be seen only his head was seen he started growing in size to an extent that the entire sky was covered by his head as everyone was watching this an opening started in the center of his eyebrows 
fiery sparks <coughs> and light started gushing from it. The brilliance increased to a point when some devotees unable to bear and some fell unconscious and children began to cry. Suddenly all this phenomenon disappeared and everybody saw Swami standing amidst them. Smiley looking towards them, he asked them, what happened? Are you alright? Then he uh, materialized vibhuti and applied it on everyone's forehead. One by one, all those who had fallen unconscious regained their consciousness, but all of them felt the vertigo, the reeling sensation, effect for another two days. While explaining this extraordinary darshan, Swami said, since you prayed to me to show you my real nature, I did all this. Because your prayers of many past births, I have shown you the third eye. I did not show you even a thousand part of my brilliance. But that too was difficult for you to withstand. In this, I am glad to share with you, summarizing what all that has been said. Bhagwan showing the sun behind him. Bhagwan showing the moon behind his head. Bhagwan showing his third eye. To the devotees who accompanied him to the shores of Chitravati River. What a wonderful experiences really they are. We want to have these experiences, but we don't question ourselves if we can bear bear them. The severe heat of the sun, severe cold of the moon, can we bear it? That's what happened to those days, uh, to those devotees of those days. Therefore, it is very clear to all of us, the word Satya has three syllables. Satya, sa ta ya. Sa means sakshatkar, sakshatkar, self-realization. Ta meaning tapas, penance. Ya meant yama, control of the senses control of the senses. This, these miracles I haven't heard before. Therefore, I wanted to share them with you. Once a student was asked to speak and he spoke for some time and he addressed Swami as his mother. Sai Mata. So, he further said, I don't have a mother, but I am blessed with the love of a thousand mothers. In the divine discourse that followed, Swami explained this statement. He said, do you all know why this student referred to me as Sai Mata? Ten years ago, when this boy and his brother were young children, their mother was brought to Brindavan on a stretcher, stretcher. They had arrived from Himachal Pradesh. The mother was seriously ill. I drew the children close to me and promised her, from now on these children are mine. From now on these children are mine. Don't worry. The mother was relieved. Later she passed away. The Their father rarely comes here. The children have been left under Swami's care. The children started attending school here. The boy was five years old and was studying in the first standard. One day, the lady warden brought him to me, I mean Swami, saying, this child is missing his mother terribly. He, does not, he doesn't even eat his food and keeps crying all the time. 
I took him to the interview room and materialized a ring for him. I pacified him in many ways. From that moment, he was able to overcome his sorrow. See, Swami's love. Swami's love. I also have come across another instant, instance where a middle-aged gentleman came for Swami's darshan after his father's demise. He was sitting in the first row. As Swami came along, this person was overwhelmed with his father's memories and was unable to control his tears. Swami walked up to him and told him lovingly, Don't cry, don't cry. Serve your mother, serve your mother. And from that moment, miraculously, his sufferings eased because the gentleman realized that he was under his divine father's care. Swami says, Your own parents may love you with some selfish intent, but this divine Sai Mata and Pita, mother and father, showers compassion on you only so that you may attain success in your efforts towards self-realization. Therefore, all Swami's miracles are directed to this end such that we'll have that kind of self-awareness or what you call self-realization. That's what Satya meant. And Swami mentioned that he is Dharma Swarupa. Dharma meaning righteousness. And Dharma Parayana. Parayana. P-A-R-A-Y-A-N-A. Parayana meaning ultimate refuge. Dharma righteousness is our ultimate re- our refuge. So, Sai is the ultimate refuge and can be attained through self-realization but adhering to truth and righteousness. Whenever God has incarnated on earth, He has given utmost importance to adherence to truth and righteousness. The Ramayana narrates the various duties of a father, mother, son, brother, wife and king. Lord Ramachandra has set an ideal for us by explicitly following his duties as a son, husband, brother and king. On many occasions, during Krishnavatar, Bhagavan stressed on the importance of dharma in Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> dharma has got prime importance in all the scriptures and have been repeatedly mentioned by Bhagavan. Why Bhagavan Shirdi Bhagavan had one peculiar habit. At times when he talked, he seemed to speak irrelevant things, apparently vague to a common listener, but relevant and meaningful to the one for whom it was intended. Once when Sainath was sitting in Dwaraka Mai and talking to his devotees, an unknown person arrived for his darshan. No sooner did he start stepping up onto the steps of the Dwarakamai, Baba thundered at the top of his voice, Stop! Don't climb up! Such an expression was quite alarming to all present, including the person concerned. Not bothering about Baba's warning, he continued to climbing the steps of Dwarakamai. Baba then flew into a rage, his face and eyes turning red with anger. He shouted, Stop there! Don't you dare 
climb up? Haven't you sold your father? How dare you climb up still? You have sold your father. Hearing this, the intruder felt ashamed. He hung his head and left. None were able to understand the significance of this statement. On inquiry, it was revealed that he had recently changed his religion. No one was aware of this. But can anything be hidden from the omniscient Sai? Impossible. All religions teach the same principle of love. So why did he need to change his religion? He could have fulfilled his duties by remaining true to the religion of his birth. Saidna did not approve of this and so showed his displeasure. Therefore, Swami tells us, my life is message. My life is my message. At the age of 10, he told Iswaramma, I have been born to serve. He does his task of uplifting of humanity is ongoing. Swami says, to follow religion is an eternal law. If one stops abiding by his religion, there will be chaos in the world. As mentioned in Gita, they indeed who follow this immortal dharma, the law of life, as described, endowed with faith, Regarding me as their supreme goal, such devotees are exceedingly dear to me. This is what Bhagavan said. <coughs> so, in this brief talk, I am happy that I could share with you certain rare incidents that occurred when Swami was quite young. Thank you. Shall meet again.